Okay, welcome back guys to DJ's Taste Tester. So glad you're with me. I got a lot to say and not a lot of time to say it, so I'm just gonna cut right to the chase. Ezekiel Elliott is a value buy this offseason. Zeke is at an all-time low in his value, coming off a really bad 2020 season. But in 2019, he had finished as the RB3 in PPR. He was entering the 2020 season, being drafted very high in the first round. Even in Dynasty startups, he was going in the first round. Well, now he's supposed to go in the late second to early third in Dynasty, and he's supposed to be traded for very little? Come on! He's still the exact same running back just because he didn't have the exact same season from 2019 to 2020. There's a ton of reasons for it. There's a ton of ways to show exactly why it was night and day, and it is not up to Zeke in most of why that happened. Jumping right in, Zeke is like an old-fashioned. He's the whiskey, but the other parts of what makes up an old-fashioned are what helped make Zeke the best he could be last season. So I went ahead, made up this old-fashioned right here, 2019 version of Zeke. Oh, that is an RB3 right there. So we got a lot of parts in it. First, starting with our offensive line right here. The key fruit pieces, if you will, okay? So we've got an all-league offensive line right there, all pro. These guys were studs, okay? Travis Friedrich, Lyle Collins, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, all highly rated, all making up the offensive line that finished last season. <clears throat> First in stuff rate, first in sack rate, first in second level yards, second in power success rate, and second in adjusted line yards. That is impressive. That's a really good offensive line to run behind. Next, you had the play calling. These guys, the Dallas Cowboys, were throwing out plays at the play action play, sixth most in the league for the third most yards off of those play action plays. Meaning, you know, Zeke was really crucial in that. He was helping create that ability to open up the yardage because defenses were respecting him and vice versa. The passing was allowing for the defenses not to be totally stuck on if Zeke was gonna run the ball or not. That decision making was crucial. And lastly, our simple syrup right here, this was our, uh, our targets, our usage of Zeke in that passing game, which was so heavily used, okay? So that means like last season right here, we're sitting with Zeke, we've got a great drink. 71 targets, 420 receiving yards, okay? Over 1,300 rushing yards, over, uh, over 14 total touchdowns. The targets were really crucial. That was a big part of his success. 7.8 yards per reception, almost six yards per target to Zeke. The team was doing excellent, okay? Well, then we run into 2020, okay? Now we start in March, early before the preseason. We lose a key player in the, the lineup, Travis Friedrich, the center. Okay, so we kind of take a little bit of what we had and we, uh, we get rid of it, all right? So now we're left with maybe half of what we had, but you know what, we're still gonna do okay. Well, right before the season starts, we lose another key piece of the offensive line. Lyle Collins, tackle, the fifth rated tackle based upon PFF, okay? So we're starting out with half of what we had at the center, a little bit less of the rest of the offensive line, tossing those in to create our drink, okay? We're still doing all right though, nothing to worry about. The next thing we gotta add in is our play calling. Through those first couple games of 2020, once we had started the season, after we got through these injuries, we were actually doing all right. We had play action passing going at a heavy rate. Dak was using the play action passing. Everything was looking just like last season was going. And then we added our targets. Just a little bit here, Zeke was on pace to finish the season with just as many targets as he had received, if not more than the previous season. All of his statistics pointed to him finishing the exact same way as the RB3 finish he had in 2019. Okay, so we started off well, we're, we're doing okay in the season, most things are working out. Well, four games in, we lose another piece of that offensive line. Let me just reach my gross hands in here. We lose Tyron Smith. Okay, now we're starting to hurt a little bit more. We, we are not made up of the exact same offensive line that we had from 2019. It's still not the worst. Zeke, through this point, had still been producing at a very high level as the RB5 through that point. Well, one of those reasons was because we had Dak Prescott still. Dak was doing awesome, helping that offense really flow, helping everything move. Oh, then we lose him. Remember that? The gruesome entry that the review and the replay couldn't help but play every single time? <laughs> now we do not have Dak Prescott. We don't have as much of the offensive line. Are we gonna panic? No. America's team doesn't panic. You don't get to be America's team by panicking. You get to be that by saying you're America's team. And when you say you're America's team, you come out and you grab your next player, your next best available, Andy Dalton. 
Well, Andy comes in, and let's just see if we can't help make this happen. It's surprisingly better than we thought. And then, a few games in, Zeke's not terrible, not still the best he was gonna be. Oh yeah, we lose Andy Dalton. Then we got Ben DiNucci. He's coming in, and he's gonna try and help us finish off this drink. He's also wildly inefficient. Next, we're going up to Garrett Gilbert. Now we're, <laughs> we're really working at the bottom of the barrel here. Okay, and that backfired. Garrett Gilbert, luckily, we have Andy Dalton coming back. Help us finish off this drink. Unfortunately, what we see happen is as we get these new quarterbacks involved, we lose a lot as to what made uh, Zeke so successful in that play calling, okay? So we've got the most of an old fashioned kind of taken care of. We're gonna add our ice in real quick, get the whiskey in, and see if we can maybe piece together something decent. <sighs> right off the bat, quickly you can tell some differences between the 2019 and the 2020 Zeke with, that was involved in this old fashioned. It's very easy to say he was not the same running back he was, but that take doesn't really factor in the fact that there were so many different variables that weren't the same between the two years. Losing all of the linemen that he had, losing Dak Prescott, those were huge blows to his production. He went from having the ability to finish as the RB1 starting out the season in 2020 to having no chance at all. In the first five games, Zeke scored almost half of his fantasy points, received almost half of his targets through the air, received over half of his reception yards, had uh, three-fourths of his touchdowns on the season. It was just not even the same. Zeke didn't lose a step. He lost an offense. Everything changed. So with a guy who's still got four years left on his contract, who we look and say this year coming back up, we got Dak coming back, we'll see more of that play action again, we'll return back to the offensive level at which the Dallas Cowboys were expected to have, Zeke will be a part of that offense and make the old fashion that we would love and enjoy, not the one that we saw this year. Now as far as people want to judge Zeke based upon this right here, that's where our value comes in. That's why it's time to buy. Get yourself a running back who will win you the league. We've seen from another writer in our fantasy intervention, Jacob Sanderson, he talked about the Pareto principle, Pareto principle. I don't know. Either way, it's all about getting those few players who score the majority of your points. Zeke is that guy. And if you want more reason as to why a running back can be a very good value through years, even after people want to say they hit a certain age, we got another uh, writer, C. Corey, taking on a great article about why running backs can last a lot longer than you expect, especially the good ones. So guys, check us out, fantasyintervention.com. Follow us on Twitter, at joinourcircle underscore. Follow me, at airdj. Please like and subscribe. It helps us out a ton. Looking forward to seeing you guys next time. <music>